Hi everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Sarah Pavin. I'm an Olympian and beach volleyball world champion and a longtime professional indoor player. Oh my gosh, episode eight. I've been thinking about rolling thunder in my head since I watched that episode. That hands down up until this point, my favorite episode of all time. The new characters, Nishinoya and Asahi, hearing how Nishinoya thinks about his position and getting the backstory of Asahi and how why he left volleyball and just everything going on in his head. And then seeing the young boys, Hinata, Kageyama, like rallying, trying to get him to come back. Oh, and the coach, I never saw that coming. Okay. Um, I was speechless at the end of last episode, have been thinking about that episode ever since I watched it. So I am beyond excited to watch episode nine, a set for the ace. <sighs> you guys, Haikyuu, best ever. Busting out my Tokyo top today because I'm that excited about episode nine. So <sighs> I wanna keep talking about episode eight. I already did that. So let's move on to episode nine, a set for the ace coming at you right now. Okay, so we left episode eight, Asahi saw Hinata and Kageyama practicing their quick attack. And I think some volleyball love was starting to come back into his heart. Um, so, I mean, I think based on the title, Asahi's gonna come back, but typical cliffhanger. Um, we're gonna have to see what happens here, so let's go. He was caught. The Cats vs. Crows Dumpster Showdown. Best name for a game ever. Okay, a little tough love from Daichi there. As always, love the captain. He gives people what they need. I saw he clearly needs a little kick in the butt to get over his anxiety, to get over feeling sorry for himself and get back in the gym doing what he loves. Um, I think it's clear from last episode, Nishinoya just wants to play with him. So he, he's clearly not concerned about Asahi's play or like judging him for it at all. Um, Suga was the former setter. We've got somebody new on the court now, Kageyama, who clearly wants to play with him. So love that Daichi stepped up, gave him some tough love to get his butt back with the team.
<laughs> Takeda's being such a creep. <laughs> he wore a suit and everything. He dressed up. The one my cost of all. Okay, four. Okay, before we get into Nakoma High School, I can kind of relate to what Ukai is saying because sometimes you just want to like live with the memories you have and not mess with them or necessarily like erase them or, uh, or copy over them because I honestly still have not watched the match that we won world championships. I have seen the last couple points, but I have never watched it all the way through because I just have this feeling in my mind of what happened and what it was like. And I know watching it closely back it will maybe change that. So I can completely relate to what he's saying. Um, he will miss playing. He'll have all these feelings come back. Um, obviously a little bit different than what I'm explaining, but kind of similar. When does practice start? Oh my gosh. Nothing like a little ego to get the wheels moving. Okay, so we got a coach. He was a former player. Also, does anybody else think that young Ukai kind of looks like Tanaka minus the little Widow Peak action that Tanaka has? Am I the only one? I don't know. Um, okay, still got those competitive juices. Love that. Always good for a team to be led by a coach who like is super competitive. So we've got a coach. Okay. Things are shaping up. Ooh, lots of bruises on those arms. Oh, that is also called covering, to cover the ball. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, um, he worked on his coverage so that his hitters could just go for the ball without fear. My boy Nishinoya has got some selflessness. Oh my gosh. Okay, I love that. He couldn't practice. He couldn't practice with the team. 
So he worked on like covering. <gasps> this guy's gr like, my heart keeps growing bigger and bigger for him. And clearly Tanaka's does too. That's not going to happen. Is it like the men's like adult rec league? I, oh, I hope so. Who is that? Oh, the gang showed up. I wonder if they're old Karasuno players or if they just like play for fun. I will say when I was playing pro overseas, you're usually being like the top women's team, like the pro women's team in a particular town, like you are the highest level of competition. So sometimes if you wanna, if you don't have time to travel to another city to like scrimmage against another like pro team, we would actually bring in like the neighborhood men as well. So like this is bringing back so many good memories, particularly of Italy. I remember this, this happened there so many times. Um, where you have like guys who enjoy playing, they're like obviously not pros, but they're pretty good. And so they would just come in on the weeknight sometimes when we needed to scrimmage. And it was so much fun. I love that they're doing this too. <laughs> I think he's sad because Asahi's not there. Oh my gosh, he not a Is this going to be his first step in the gym? Great talents mature late. Oh my gosh. Let's 
スパイカーが何度もブロックに捕まるのが怖くて圧倒的な実力の影山の影に隠れて安心してたんだスパイクがブロックに捕まる瞬間考えると今も怖いけどもう一回俺にトス上げさせてくれ朝日だから俺はこっちに入るよ影山負けないからな俺もす西野やナイスレシーブ頼むよ当然っす Oh my gosh, okay. Teary Eyes episode one. And I think I had goosebumps for that entire speech. Wow. Okay, so not only has Nishinoya been incredibly affected by Asahi's departure, but Suga is taking responsibility for it and feels like it's his fault. Like, oh my gosh, for that, like, vulnerability in that sequence was so emotional <sighs> okay i get kageyama saying that he would step down he doesn't want to like he wants to defer to suga because he's older suga being honest about asahi and how he's so overwhelmed at the thought of like letting down his hitters and that whole thing started a little bit of the waterworks I, okay, we're carrying on from the last episode. That was beautiful. So good. Karasuno versus the Neighborhood Association. that Hinata doesn't think that he is actually going to become the ace because I feel like Asahi is going to turn it up immediately. Like he never even missed a beat, never missed a practice. Suga needed that to get his confidence back. Oh my god. <laughs> Don't be so modest. You're good. I. Okay, so maybe Suga wasn't always such a, I don't want to say passive because he's not passive, but maybe not such a team player. I don't know because like Asahi and Mishinoya were both like, you've changed a lot. So maybe this ties back into the mop appearance that happened in episode seven. Um, I'm very curious to learn a little bit more about Suga's backstory here. But Suga was right. You don't, in volleyball, you need to start out with a very balanced attack because you don't want all of the pressure on one player because then it becomes so easy to defend. The blockers can just hang out over there. The defense can set up. So you want to like really run a fast offense, establish the quick attack in the middle early so that you can open things up as the game progresses and let your star player shine when they really need to. He did not even move. I 
I think Uka is impressed as well. I hope Asahi is feeling like he can attack really well with Kageyama's sets as well. Mikasa ball, woo! That scene explains it all. Okay. That was heavy. That was emotional. Um, wow. I really like Nishinoya, you guys. I really, really like him. He believes in his teammates so much. And I understand why he called Asahi a coward and why he was a little angry. For a hitter, yes, hitters get all the glory. They get all the credit when things go well. And yeah, when things don't go well, them and the setter usually get blamed. But for him to say that what Nishinoi was doing was pointless, like that has got to hit him hard because it is very clear even so early in meeting Nishinoya that he like lays it out and puts his soul on the floor. So that was probably so just deflating to hear Asahi say that. Um, the best player on the team, someone that he like will lay it all out for. And then the mop obviously came up and I think that that is a huge symbol and a huge reminder to the guys who were on the team last year that you have to have each other's backs and you have to know that you will do whatever it takes for each other no matter what because that type of confrontation shouldn't happen again. So I love that they kept the mop as that reminder. I think it's really interesting that Asahi didn't want to call for the ball at the end. 
I get it, it's totally understandable. You feel like you're letting your team down and you just like, please, somebody else just take it for one. I get that. But that dialogue between Nishinoya and Asahi was so good. And almost started Waterworks number two in this episode. I could go on and on forever about that piece, but A, I relate to it so much. B, your libero is your biggest ally on the court. They have got your back no matter what. And three, keep going. Don't be scared. Keep the aggression and wor allow yourself to work through your difficulties. Anyways, let's keep going. Okay, I understand what Asahi is saying about Suga feeling responsible and all of that, but like teammates should feel responsible for each other on the court. The whole thing about good teams is that every single player is working to make the ball better for the next person who contacts it. So yeah, if Suga sees Asahi getting blocked, of course, as a good teammate, he is thinking, what can I do to make this ball better for him? What did I not do to put him in trouble? Same thing with Nishinoya, like I needed to make a better pass. And if every single person on the team has that attitude of bettering the ball and they have that attitude of responsibility to the players around them, that is what makes a good team. So they had that like foundation and backbone already. I just don't know if they necessarily knew how to put it into practice yet. So I think it's a good thing. Um, but Asahi was just so in his own head, he couldn't see it yet. Long haired guy. Tsukushima. <laughs> 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 Tanaka is Noya's biggest fan.
I don't know if you can see the hair on my arms, but I have full body goosebumps. Fully, like, had blurry eyeballs. Um, oh, that was so good. Like, I stopped the tears from flowing, but they wanted to come out. Okay. Everything that I said before that like part just like came true. You're not alone. And hey, very impressive that Suga was thinking that many things before he set the ball. That is incredible. Um, but just like even Kageyama across the net, like cheering for him. Suki like being funny. <laughs> Can't help himself. Tanaka is the biggest sweetie ever like I think he cried as many times as I did in this episode because he was feeling the feels too so he's a big softy but oh my gosh Asahi just understanding that everybody has his back and like wants him to succeed like Nishinoya like taking full responsibility for not covering Asahi getting blocked like that's all he worked on all his time away from the team like it paid off in like their first practice together I that was so overwhelming in the most beautiful meaningful way possible this was an amazing follow-up to episode 8 both of these episodes were incredibly impactful. I loved the backstory that we found out about some of the new players, the history of the team. I love seeing how all the players are just gonna give themselves up for each other 
and like have each other's backs no matter what. I love that Asahi broke through and almost exploded the ball on the floor, like, whoa. So, oh my gosh. That whole story with Asahi, Noya, etc., Ukai coming in to be the coach, I am on cloud nine. I'm probably gonna be thinking about this episode just as much as I thought about episode eight. Top two, hands down. I felt all the feels. Um, oh, I am so excited. So I'm assuming the next episode will be a match where all the guys are together. So that was unreal. Um, as always, leave me your comments. I know I asked a few questions, so help a girl out. Um, I would love it so much if you would like this video and subscribe to my channel. And I cannot wait to check out episode 10 with you guys. So stay tuned so we can watch some more Haikyuu together. Uh, I'll see you guys next time. Bye.